Today I'm going to teach you how to farm in the Darkness Falls mod for 7 days. This is a ridiculous sized farm. Uh, you're probably only going to need, you know, like a small little section of this. Um, so I'm just going to show you here and make it real. I made it really big, fat, big and fancy, you know, so it's really easy to see. Uh, mushrooms grow anywhere, so you can basically put them on every surface. I'm not quite sure, and at least this version, that if they need darkness or not. But if they do, you know, just dig a hole, put them in the in a little cave. <laughs> okay, now we will break down farming in this conveniently beautiful graph. Now, farming, you have to get a book that will teach you how to become a farmer. That book will give you tools, a rain catcher, irrigation pipes, pumps to attach to the pipe to pump water, and lights to grow things underground. Now, when you choose a water source, you choose one, rain catcher or irrigation pipe, then you have to choose a soil type, tilled soil, or farm plot. Farm plot can be grown anywhere. Tilled soil, you need the, the tools and a farmer to do it. So it's got a skill-based uh, basis on it, and it's more difficult to get to, but it's once you have it unlocked, it's much less resource-intensive than farm plot. All right, that's the guide. Thank you very much. Please leave a like, subscribe. It counts a lot, etc. Okay, uh, let's let me show you what it actually looks like in game. <laughs> oh God! So there's tillable dirt, whole tillable dirt. Now that I have this one level, and you want it to be a level because the idea is that the zombies won't get stuck here. So you do that. Same thing with the railing. The railing eventually goes here and it makes it so that it's a flat surface and then you have your little rain catcher down here over it. And so I'm gonna show you here the process. So we want tillable dirt. And then we would go right click on this and we'd go all the way down, eventually getting there. Move over one slot, and then if it's easier for you, I use these uh, frame blocks. They're just frames, frame shapes, and then you can just you know stick one in here, and it just kind of makes things easier for you to see, because uh, it can be kind of confusing, especially if they're not uh, level. And you can see how it's flat here. This is what happens when you do the frame blocks. Like you can see it's a little bit uneven here. And then when I put the flame, the frame block down, it will uh, even out the ground a little bit. The other thing they do is they flatten the terrain as you place them. Or if there's like grass here, um, you can just place it and now the grass is gone and it's flattened. Otherwise, whenever you're trying to do stuff here, you'll have to do two swings to knock it out. And the way this item works is the left click, uh, collect stuff, right click creates the tilled farm so this is now a plot where you can plant stuff so like regular tree seeds can pretty much go anywhere as long as it's dirt but if you have an actual seed uh, like let's just make one quick the actual whoops <laughs> the actual seed will have to either be placed in a farming plot or tillable soil so it's like tilled soil is here so I can do it but regular you can't you would run this all the way down and then we're gonna just assume that we've already done this so now we're gonna dig down one hole and then you know you could crouch and like run this down real quick if you wanted to but we're not gonna do that I'm just gonna show you and then so I fill these up and eventually I'd come back through here with the pass um, putting these here you, these are rain catchers. They will make water every two spaces. I'm not sure how uh, the spacing exactly works on these. It's kind of debatable on how to do them. I think technically they go every uh, two blocks on the side of them. So you could put four blocks in between them. But I found what actually is true is that there's kind of, depending on the scaling of the farm and how big it is, you can actually get away with about five blocks in between each one. So you go one, two, three, four, five, and then on the sixth block you put one down, and then you keep going, and every sixth block you would put one down. And um, while you can technically do it uh, with less, you might actually be able to get away with it more, uh, with more space in between, because by the time the water is used by the plants, the water's falling down and filling it up. So that scaling on like my gigantic farm here seems to be 
where I'm gonna have like a few barrel spots left over where there's not gonna be growing plants. So you can obviously see where the problems are. And then you can just add a one or two extra barrels and it will make up for it. And you know, I don't know how well that works on a smaller farm, but I mean, if you wanted to do a ridiculous size farm like this, uh, it seems to work out to a few barrels. So you might not be able to get away with that with the much smaller farm. But I mean, if you're making a much smaller farm in the first place using these things, like why not just, you know, do it every two, two spaces or four spaces? I mean, it's the amount of barrels you're using is just silly. It's just slowly like six barrels. <laughs> so so it, is, it doesn't really matter, you know, to be this technical and whatnot. But I mean, if you want it to look pretty or whatever, like, sure, go ahead. You're, you're at that point, you're doing it more for aesthetics rather than like actual runescape level uh, <laughs> efficiency, you know. So it doesn't really matter for in terms of barrels. It's just wood and a few pieces of iron. Now the next step is you need a shovel or you need an auger or like a lot of time with the stick I guess and uh, you got to knock out three blocks deep down so you get your uh, you know shaped out point here you mark it off and then you go down one then two then three blocks and what this allows you to do is place the rain catcher down there at the bottom and it allows it for space for the water so it goes up one block after the, the green catcher so it uses up two blocks and on the third block is where you put your covering and you put a, a block that has an opacity layer or something like the metal fences and railings that allows light to pass through otherwise the rain won't be able to fall into the hole because you kind of think of, of light as like rain now if you hold down R you can get to shapes here and this will allow you to pick custom shapes and if you look in the description below of the video there's a video that a guy did here that was really awesome. We went over all the different opacity uh, blocks and stuff and tested all of these but in general anything that has like railings open holes to it or anything like that is something that's going to have any an opacity layer. So you pick one of those and then you just throw that block down and you can pass any sort of objects through this hole uh, like um, things to uh, make zombies change their minds about stuff and you can also pass light through it so as you can see on the sides of the block you can't get um, you can't see through it but light will actually pass through it so what you can actually do is rotate it and then put it in such a way so that it looks like you have a roof on something and that roof will be a lot prettier looking and this will enable you to make a uh, farm inside of a house where it's actually inside of a building but uh, the building will be exposed but that room will probably get cold because it's actually exposed to the outside so you have to keep that in mind so you might want to keep it in a separate room where you don't get super cold if it's like in the in the forest or um not the forest the uh, the winter uh, snowing biome or something but other than that and maybe birds uh, might be able to aggro differently and inside it so maybe keep that in mind but otherwise like you'll be able to have it kind of protected a little bit more than an open field like this so that's just something cool to keep in mind and something fun for you to be able to do another quick thing to explain here is if you are building something more fancy like interior inside of a house you might encounter these pink blocks and what the pink means is that the plant will grow on it but it's trying to tell you that there is nothing on the foundation for this block so like this block is free floating i think in the air simply being held by the metal railing maybe and not even the sides so if that metal railing gets destroyed it's telling you this will fall out and the plant on top of it will get destroyed so that's all it means and when you can actually not grow something, it's going to be a red square. But the pink square is fine, it'll grow, it's just in danger of falling. Now as far as irrigation systems go, you're going to need a metal workstation. You can make the metal fences and railings here as well. You're going to need one irrigation pump, and you're going to need about a bajillion uh, forged iron to make them. Uh, they're the same parts, they're just, you know, different models to look different. So it's, you know, aesthetics at that point. But all they have to do is touch and then you make them touch and then touch them to the irritation irrigation pump it, it, it the whole thing is irritation to be honest and then uh it submerge it in water submerge the pipes and submerge the um stuff with like a rain catcher and then they have the irrigation pump touching the irrigation pipes and then you're good to go and it will work so uh have fun mining all of that because uh, oh my god it took me i don't know how many like fifty thousand forged 
iron fragments or whatever. So, you know, <laughs> no. I mean, you could just make make the little barrels, like, unless this in the future gets updated, like, no. This is a nightmare. Especially if you're gonna do it on, like, a giant scale like this. Cause, it, they, and then it takes, like, it takes, like, 20 minutes a pipe or something, 10 minutes a pipe. So, you're looking at time sunk cost into this. You know, look, look, we're at day 70 and like, I still haven't even done this. I've been trying to do this by myself and I just don't have enough to do this. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. So anyways, dig out your, your, your thing, your thing here. Here's a completed thing. And you could even replace all these wood blocks with farming plot soil, whatever on top of it, but it's really hard to get that. So, you know, that's a future proof thing. Um, but you know here three blocks down build a thing you can see how far the crops go out about four or five spaces that versus the The, the, the horror nightmare of making the irrigation system is just crazy and you need perk skills and, uh. and So here you can see where it is in the book I go down into the skills and then go to farmer and then it's under master farmer And you have to unlock all this stuff you have to get to here and then you can make the underground stuff and growing lights uh, for the indoor farming and whatnot. But I told you, you can already use the, the opacity blocks and make a uh, hashtag farm <laughs> without like, uh, you know, dealing with that. So that's much easier to do. And then just getting to all this is just insane. So, you know, I don't want to deal with any of that nonsense anyway. And it's just much easier to just, you know, use these things and share the, 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 the advanced farm and stuff give you better materials and things and that's like hyper late game maybe and then like they might go into like closed materials or something but like uh i never really seem to have that problem so you know uh that's not it's not really helpful for me to do that that's what i found it's just like wait until you get to that point in the game and then just make yourself a small farm or whatever to just do specifically that and you'd be better off and just you know make the make the thing and then instead of this this nightmare so anyways moving on and then we have the regular topsoil which is just this dirt here and i usually make some of it just so i have it here to throw it in case i mess up so show you here it's like this is the regular topsoil so there you go. These are the farming plots. Farming plots are a lot more difficult to make. Um, you either require fertilizer and or you need these items. These you get from uh, zombies and um, animals and things. And nitrate, you can get them from those as well. And you can um, harvest those things with a bladed tool. And um, you can also find nitrate in certain biomes where there's these rocks. Uh, see, there's a rock over here. Let's just get my bike real quick. And you're looking for these rocks, which are like this. In Darkness Falls, they're all, they all look like this. Um, so you have to dig underneath it a little bit to find the ore that's here. I'll just dig real quick. And this one's got iron. So you're gonna be looking for the one that has nitrate and you can find a nitrate deposit. And uh, sometimes they're linked together really close, uh, but sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll find a whole nitrate deposit. So that's just, you know, luck dependent and it's also biome dependent where some of the biomes have different uh, resources. So this is a forest biome that we're in right now. Okay, you can destroy it and it's like, oh no, I destroyed it. Oh wait, no, it's actually right here, so. Ooh. And there's no advantage over farming plot or tillable soil. The only thing is like, you don't have to be a farmer or have read a farming book to do it. And with the farming books, you'll start out with a book and let's see, start out with a book. And then the book is here, it's farming class and, um, Living off the land gives you the ability to make the, the tools, animal feed, snares, mortar and pestle. And what mortar and pestle... Okay, uh, we're, uh, what mortar and pestle, uh, what that does is it makes it uh, able to... 
live in the mist. And uh, we're going to get in the base before uh, the mist creatures uh, take hold of my soul. And um, so the mortar and pestle, uh, they, um, they can be created uh, via the workbench, I believe. And... Yeah, here you go. If you're ever in doubt, you can click uh, this little book here, and it'll tell you the places where you can forge it. So, forge apparently. So, like this is an advanced forge. You have well, we used to have a little uh, wooden one um, with uh, rocks, but this is like the fancier version. Um, but it's just a forge. You can make the forge here. You gotta. Um, you can either go into one of the other classes that does the forge stuff, or you can just find it or buy it from a trader. And so you place that down, and then you place you do the mortar and pestle, and the mortar and pestle looks like this. It's this little cool-looking um, crushable, uh, I forget, it's like Mayans or something. They used to like crush stuff with rocks um, and grind up like maize and stuff in it. And this is where you can get the animal feed. Uh, which you get from using bananas and things and grinding that up. You can also make seeds, and you can make seeds on um, by hand, but it uses twice as much ingredients, so you use four seeds instead of two. So this allows you to do a bunch of the seeds and some of the foods and stuff as well. Uh, you have your regular campfires that you know you can make or find these or buy them from a trader, and that allows you to do different things. Then um, the sous chef. Sous chef in here allows you to cook more things, um, but you I wouldn't level those up right away because when you do your class quests, you you unlock the class, you get class quests, and you do the class quests that'll pop up here in quests. And as you can see, I've done a couple of them already. And then when you do them, uh, you get some rewards, and some of the rewards are like a point or two in uh, the skill books. So do that, and they're real easy. Uh, do that before you actually um, pay anything so you don't lose any of your skill points leveling up something that you could have got for free. So ovens are really good. All you have to do is, it's a skill book in here that you can also get I think for free probably from labor I think. Um, one of these, um, I'm not sure which one, like he can craft forges, oh. one of those, or you can pay one point for it. Oh there's my buddy. I thought it was the mist monsters come to get me. Then, um, the ovens are really good, so they don't use fire uh, stuff. You just need a battery, and they will work forever. There's kitchens, tools, uh, or kitchen storage places uh, that look cool. Uh, there's a sink that we don't have right now, but you can use a sink, and then you can use that to fill up water bottles and glasses and anything. And then you can toss them in here. And that allows you to make like uh, orange tea is like a really good high healing thing um, where you oranges and you get your boiled water so you get the boiled water or you get the murky water from the little glass jars fill them up here by like putting them in your inventory and then right clicking on it and it would allow you to get murky water throw it in here boil it and then you can do that so you're probably gonna need a couple of things um, clay bowls is another thing as you can see a lot of things use these clay bowls and you can make clay bowls uh, over here and they're really easy to make and you fill them up with water again from like your sink and then you'd have to cook the water and then you can use them to make pudding or um, soups and different things like that and usually you're probably going to want a box uh, for clay bowls and one or two for just jars because the jars will start stacking up and then um, like what I like to do is I like to like throw everything in here because I can never remember, or I can never remember what it is, and then like I have like these are kind of sorted by HP, like these are kind of equal. I just have them right there for now. But like banana bread is like it heals a lot, but it takes so much to make it. Versus orange marmalade is like almost the same amount of food, but it heals you a bit and it also gives you more stamina and increases your wellness, where this one doesn't at all. And wellness is like your amount of HP and stamina, so that's food dependent. And uh, like you can see, I have a wellness buff here of one particular type of water. So if I eat, I have this particular type of uh, wellness boosted for this. And so I have to wait for that 10 minute timer to wear down. And if it doesn't, and I try and re-eat, uh, I will not 
be able to get more wellness points. So I have to wait for the timer to go down and eat, and then I can get it again. So you can see I have different class levels of this. So that's going to wear it off in three seconds. So I can now run another one. So now my increase my wellness went up by two. Now I have to wait 19 minutes. So the bigger one, the longer it's going to take. But that's how you get your, your HP to go up and stuff. And you can also uh, level up. I think there is another like class in here somewhere that levels up. So it's Health Nut here. Health Nut will increase your wellness. And you can increase it by like 200. There might be mods or something else that I'm forgetting that will also increase it. So you got your animal feed, right? We got our animal feed. We have the beehives that come with farming as well. So you just check these and they will have either animal fat or jars of honey. You don't have to do anything with these ones. These ones are just here. Uh, that is not a nice guy. So, so we have our little box here. It has animal feed in it. So you get some animal feed. And Okay, get the animal feed. Oh my god. I'm trying to make a video, sir. Okay, you get the animal feed, and then you can use the chicken coop. The chicken can give you eggs and feathers, and then you have to equip it here, and then you look at the little thing here and right click it, and now it's filled back up. And you have to refill this one, or the beehive you don't. Do that real quick and then there you go nice and easy just toss those back in there and then see chicken coop really easy to make really easy way to get eggs just find eggs uh, around in nests on the ground they just you know look like bird nests probably not any nearby because you know we live here uh, then you have your animal snares and they give a little bit of meat, leather and then you set them the same way with the animal feed and that makes it really easy so you don't really have to go out looking for animals so you can you can be really lazy um, but it's nowhere near as good as if you had actually done that and uh, you know used your own little fun items and another thing you're going to want to do is any of these like farming sections and stuff, what I still need to do over there is you want to put a scarecrow down because the scarecrow acts as a human being. So you can wander away and it doesn't really affect me too much because I am around here and uh, so I'm using up this block space in memory and so stuff is loaded in here. But if I were to leave and not come back and there was no scarecrow there, it wouldn't actively do any timers on any of these plants or anything. They would just be sitting here and nothing would be actually be de being done. So when you put that scarecrow down, it's as if you were standing here and it creates that player is occupying this space block uh, area and it loads it into memory and runs the timers on it. So I don't think it maybe loads zombies or anything in here. I'm not quite sure about that, but I know it at least controls and keeps the tick items uh, ticking instead of not. And another thing you might want to bring with you and start making as well is coffee. I like coffee. Um, you can probably make better things, but I like coffee it's just because it has stamina regen and I usually has it, have it as a crop anyway. And um, I usually don't have the other ingredients by the time I have coffee to start making like coffee cakes or anything else um so coffee just kind of sits here so i just grinded a little bit of the coffee in the coffee allows you to have the stamina regen to just sit here and uh, clunk a lot of this stuff and it regens it fast enough so uh that's a really good thing to have uh the auger is probably the biggest upgrade you can get here um if you're gonna do the straight farming thing like i'm the farmer person i usually get a few points into this that helps as well with the stamina regeneration before you have the auger uh, which I would recommend getting an auger to do this 
um, before you consider making such a gigantic thing. Like, it doesn't need to be this big at all by far, but, um, you know, if I was gonna make a video, you know, I, w I wanted to make, uh, uh, you know, a style on everyone, like, big video farm thing, so. And I don't know, aesthetically, it just looks cool. Here you can see the difference between the banana trees. So these ones are not grown, these are fully grown. And you get your tool here, and you can whack them. <laughs> and there you go. If you whack a regular one, it will destroy. So, same thing with these, more or less, but they have health. And the trees that have fruit, here. They're now empty. Now just leave it alone or you'll damage it. And that's it pretty much for the trees. Okay, now we're in my base here. We're gonna go into skills. And when you start off, you'll have these little books here. Uh, you can make them more with the more make you can make more of them with a writing desk. And um, you have your uh, where is it? The book. I think it's class blank class paper. Yeah. So you get your blank class paper at the beginning of the game, and then you get to choose which one uh, you want. And then uh, you do class farmer if you want to be the farmer or otherwise you have to make one of these by hand and I believe you need skill notes and um, you can get these by having like a item that teaches you how to make something don't know if I have any on my person at the moment but anyways you find those little these little schematics and then you would click on the schematic and then you would push S and normally that would scrap it and you would get, you know, like different things like if you had like clothes you might get cloth fragments well for the skill books that teach you, uh, schematic stuff teaches you things you'll get skill notes and then you can use those skill notes along with a uh, die which I think like I have some die here like we have some eggs then you need, uh, you got your black, and then you can make black if you need to from various other things. Uh, you use the black into ink, egg, with jar of honey. You got all these different recipes for making black, so you just get the different colors and you can make that. And you use that, and I think you need a feather, and you can make a quill, so you can dip it into the ink, and then you can make the book with the right, right amount of skill notes, which I think it takes like 300 or 200 or 400 something is a considerable amount and then you can make that you might also need a few more things But I don't have the ability to craft it right now, so you can't see it So now we see uh, with the addition of a few scarecrows and the addition of a few water wells in certain places you can uh, Have all the crops grown here, and you have a full gigantic farm so there's no reason i just i couldn't get this one to go and then so i put another one down just for the meanwhile um but yeah i put some of those it's just far easier at least at this point to put these down than to make this elaborate long thing and then the amount of resources I had to go into this i think i have like 300 blocks or something 400 blocks and i use like a hundred or something on a row and that was like 5,000 iron or something. So it was considerable amount of iron that first you have to get, or 50,000 iron, I guess. Um, so you have, you have to get that and mine it out. Then you have to wait here for it to make the iron bars. So I think it's much easier just to, to do this and use those and just make them as you need be um, every few blocks uh, sometimes it seemed to be that like some of the plants would absorb the water so I needed like a few extra ones here and there so I just put those down just for like you know extra extra work like these are a little bit closer I think so I added like an extra one even though like there's this one there were still like a few spots here that were needing water um, I'm not sure why maybe it has to do with like the row of plants here and 
there's this second row here and this one doesn't have the second row so maybe the, the amount of blocks from over here on the water got transferred over here or something like I'm not quite sure exactly so but you know it really takes no effort just to dig another one and then place one of those down so I mean that's what I would do it's just way way simpler than digging all this stuff I mean if you have a small farm sure but anything ridiculous like this this is it would just take too long it's just way too resource intensive unless you're spawning it in i guess this is good enough to get you going and you're probably only going to work with like you know a tiny little portion of this and that would be good enough for you and you wouldn't even care at that point you could just do these two spaces if you wanted to real quick because you know how long is that going to take you like, not long at all uh, you're not going to do something silly <laughs> like this. Okay, well, hopefully this video was helpful and um, taught you how to do this real quick. And uh, that's it, pretty much. Okay, well, thank you for watching my video and have a good day.